So in this question, this is a calorimetry question, and we have a five kilogram sphere at 44 degrees C, and it's got a specific heat of nine joules per kilogram degrees C, and it's dropped into a calorimeter that contains a fluid, a liquid let's say, and the liquid is uh, basically seven kilograms and the liquid is at 12 degrees C and the specific heat for the liquid is three joules per kilogram degrees C and what happens of course is that you know the two of them are in thermal contact and they exchange energy until they are in thermal equilibrium and at thermal equilibrium they have the same temperature T final and that's what we want to find there's no change in phase so I don't need to worry about latent heats so what I say for these is that inside a calorimeter the change in heat is equal to zero that means that the heat given up by the hot object is used by the cold object. Uh, there's no heat escaping to the outside world and there's no heat entering from the outside world. And we remember that our uh, relationship between heat and these parameters is heat is equal to mass times the specific heat times the temperature change. So I have two terms to worry about. I worry about the change in uh, the heat given up by the hot object and the heat absorbed by the cold object. So I say, oh, uh, the mass of the hot object, which we'll call the solid, times the specific heat of the solid, times the temperature change for the solid, added to the mass of the liquid times the specific heat of the liquid times the temperature change of the liquid is equal to zero. So if I expand these temperature changes I have the mass of the solid times the specific heat of the solid and the temperature change for the solid it starts off at high temperature and it ends up at T final. In fact, it starts at 44 and it ends at T final. And I put these th things down, the final temperature minus the initial. So I'm gonna say T final minus 44. So that's my first term. And then for my second term, I have the mass of the liquid times the specific heat of the liquid. And then if I wanna expand my uh, temperature uh, change for my liquid, it starts off at a cold temperature and it goes to a final temperature. So again, I'd say the final minus the initial is equal to zero. Let's put some more numbers in. The mass of the solid was five. The specific heat of the solid was nine. The TF is what I want to find and the temperature of the hot solid to begin with was 44. The mass of the liquid was 7. The specific heat of the liquid is 3. The temperature change was, well, T final minus 12 and all that equals 0. Well, five nines are 45, so this is 45 times TF. And we've got to subtract from that uh, five nines are 45, 44 times, uh, 45 times 44, 45 times 44 is equal to uh, 45, 45 times 44 is equal to 1980. 
there's my first two terms, and then I have 7 3s are 21, so that's 21 TF, and then I have 21 times 12, so that would be 252. Sorry, that's minus 252 because of that negative sign there. So I add these together and I get 45 and 21 is 66. So I get 66 TF. And then I want to take these two to the other side. I want to take the minus 1980 to the other side and the minus 20, uh, 252 to the other side. So I get 1980 plus, and it's going to be 252 equals. So that's going to be, they're both negative, so when to go to the other side, they're positive. So that will be 2, 2, 3, 2. So TF is equal to 2232 two, divided by 66. And that's going to equal 33.8. degrees C. There's my final answer. Put it in a nice box and there we have it. So the principle was uh, the change in heat for the system equals zero because it's in an insulated calorimeter. It's No heat's going to enter or leave. So the heat lost by the hot object must equal the heat gained by the cold object. I write my expression for the heat gained by the uh, heat lost by the hot object and I write my expression for the heat gained by the cold object add them together and set it equal to zero. I expand my change in temperature, remembering to do the final temperature minus the initial temperature in both cases. I substitute in my numbers, I do my mathematics and I get my answer. I check, I say 33.8 is less than 44, which it has to be, and it's more than 12. It's gotta be somewhere in the middle, and that's what I've got, so at least that makes sense. And the final thing I think people worry about is, should I have used Kelvin or was it okay to use degree C? And remember what we say, we always say that when it's a temperature difference, the difference in temperature, if I write it in Kelvin, is the same numerical value as the difference in temperature if I write it in degree C. So for temperature differences, I can actually use either. It's uh, significant that in this case, my specific heats were, were quoted as joules per kilogram per degree C. So that, again, told me it's okay to use degree C on this. So I hope that helped.